video, I'm going to show you three different movements and their progressions on how to stretch your hip flexors and your quads. And then fourth, I'm going to show you how to use the sew right on your psoas, your iliacus, inner groin, and the top part of your quads. All right, you're going to need three items to help with this kneeling lunge. One, we're going to need a pad. So I'm using a bolster here just so we're not pressing our knee onto the ground. You could always use a thick yoga mat or even a yoga block. But it's also nice to have something that can slide. That can be super effective. If you don't have that, not a problem. Second is we're going to need a chair by our hips. Put our support on this when we're doing these other movements so we're not having to try to focus on this whole balancing act. And then third, having another chair, when we get deeper into this lunge, we can have some balance as well so we're not having to focus on trying to keep ourselves up and hold ourselves here and, and really get into our hip flexors. The different progression here is we're gonna start with our, our knee at 90 degrees and we're gonna see how this feels on our hip to begin with. First goal here is to be able to squeeze our butt. Once you squeeze your butt, this puts your hip and your quad in a good relationship and you might already start feeling a massage or a stretch here. If you do, no problem, just stay here. Stay here, you can even hold yourself on either side and just focus on squeezing your butt and breathing and thinking about this section of your body. The other part that we're gonna do here is that, let's say you do feel this right here, we want to grab the skin and pull on it. We're, we're stretching the skin, the fascia, we're stretching the fascia here, pull up on it in different parts of this front part of our hip flexors. Pull up, pull up, and searching for anything that's tight, tender, or sore. And you might pull up on a spot and you feel maybe even a little bit of a sharp pain or a slight burning sensation in a sense because when you pull up on it, it's pulling on that skin, it's pulling on that fascia. And so just gently back off and pull just a little bit. It's a nice, comfortable five out of 10. Still a little challenging, but that hurts so good. Pull, that hurts so good position. Pull on it, now breathe. Staying in this, breathing and listening and telling it to calm down is a very effective way to bring energy, nutrients, blood flow, attention to the section that you're pulling on to get it to release. Once you feel like it's released, you can move to another spot and work your way around. Do this on the other side and now slowly and then come back to this video and slowly work your way through the progression until you're all the way down, butts tight, able to pull skin and not feeling any type of discomfort. The third one we're gonna do is we're now gonna start playing around with getting our knee behind this hip. Now, if squeeze my butt, most important, squeeze the butt. That's gonna put this relationship of the quad and the hip in a good spot. And you might even, like I said, you might even feel something here. Then the second part is we're gonna start shifting forward, keeping our butt tight and finding the next position that we need to stop and stay, and this is where the chairs come into play to help you with the balance, This we're gonna stay and breathe into it. Once we find these positions, we found this position, now my knee, let's just say it's two inches behind my, my glutes. It's two inches behind my glutes, I feel a little bit of tension here. If I go a little bit further, now it starts to become uncomfortable, so I'm gonna back off, stay there and breathe. Three to six times, good deep breath and when i say breathing i'm not talking about breathing up here in your chest i'm talking about breathing into your down here into your diaphragm pressing to keep it simple press your hands into your midsection here and then breathe into your fingers just like that we've done that breath we switch over to the other side we do both sides see how you feel and we just we can repeat this three times a day we'll start to notice your progression starting to increase now if this is super easy for you we're gonna start moving ourselves forward and forward and forward and getting that, the knee over the toe, or if that feels funny on the knee, just keep the foot out a little bit further and just work here. We have different progressions we can do with our feet closer this way so our knee becomes over our toe and we're getting extra benefits in our calf and in our knee joint here and a little bit in our adductors here and in our feet. If that's too much for you, just space your foot out and now we're just focusing more 
on this back leg. When we're getting into these deeper positions, we're getting to that point, we're getting lower in this lunge. This is where we want to include this other chair and help create that balance, not wobbling and falling all over the place. I'm going to keep my foot closer towards this knee and I can play around with the position of it and find that perfect distance. So I'm going to first start with it closer and just see how that feels on my calf, on my quad, front part of my thigh, my foot, and my knee up here. See what this range of motion feels like. Now, if this feels good, now I'm getting some extra benefit in my foot, my ankle, my calf, and my knee working into this back leg. The other thing I want to point out here, you want to be really mindful of where you're feeling the tension because I'm going to come back to now if we feel, for example, if I feel tension here, then I'm going to replace my hands, my fingers, what I'm pushing into with one of the so right product, helping massage this, this section of my body. Then this becomes much, much easier and I can get back to training in a pain-free range of motion. Now, if I'm going to have my foot out further, I'm only going to be able to go down so far right here where you can see where my hips at right here. Well, if my foot was a little bit closer, I can get much further down and more open in that hips, hip flexor. This is the standing variation. If you're unable to get on the floor, if you're unable to kneel on the floor, your mobility is not very good. We want to find a chair that's going to allow us to put our, have our knee at a 90 degrees. Another thing that can be super effective here is to have some posts or be near something that you can have some stability of holding here. If you're at the gym, put it in a squat rack, put a bench there. Now you have some things that you can hold on to so then you can work on the, the stretching and, and focusing on the position instead of the balance of being able to try to hold yourself up. But first we're just gonna do this variation because a lot of times you don't have access to those things and you just have access to a chair. So we can use, ideally we want a chair with some armrests on it so we can use that as our balance once we start to move this leg, straight leg here, back further. This position here, 90 degrees, squeeze my butt. I'm squeezing my butt and I'm just gonna see how I feel in this position already. If, remember, if I feel like I already have tension here, just stay here, breathe into it, relax, come out of it, come back into it. And I like to incorporate the breathing. And so doing three to six breaths, breathe into it and really focus on the spot that you're feeling any type of tension. You also want to think about not overdoing it. It's really paying attention to what your body's telling you. Second is when I come out of that, right? So I've done six breaths. I come out of that. Now I can shift. I can move around. I can see how I feel overall. This next round is I'm going to grab the skin and I'm going to start pulling and pushing and moving that down. So moving that down and pulling it up and searching for anything that's also tight, tender, and sore when I do that in that standing position. Once I've done those two, third one I'm going to do now is I'm going to incorporate squeezing my glutes, finding those tender position, and then now I'm going to breathe into it. The first one was just squeezing the glute, keeping here, paying attention to what's going on. The second one is I'm not squeezing the glute and I'm just searching and just moving skin around to see if there's anything that's tight, tender, and sore just by doing that. The third one is to squeeze the glute, now pull, you found that one spot, now pull on it and breathe into it. Once we do that, we switch sides and we do the same progression. Squeeze here, keep everything nice and tight, see what that feels like, release the glutes, pull up, pull down, shift to the side, and just work all around this hip flexor section here of the quad. See if you identify anything that's tight, tender, and sore. Stop, hold it, breathe into it. Nice three to six times. Add the glute, find that spot again, or maybe it's moved to another spot, stay there, and then breathe into it. And we're gonna repeat this back and forth. Now, we're gonna start moving this leg back. So now, this knee, this leg, this ankle, is behind my butt. It's creating a much wider angle here. As you can see, the angle starts to increase on this front side and decrease on this back side. And now 
I do the same thing. Squeeze my butt, see if I'm good. Pull up the skin, see if I'm good. Do both. Pull up the skin, squeeze my butt, and breathe into it. And we're going to eventually just progressively start to move until we're in a point where we can be our knee is above our hip, our hamstring is on our calf, and our back leg is as straight as it will go. Our goal is to have this back leg as completely straight, locked out, so this quad is firing, but my butt needs to stay, to stay tight. And this is where the handles come in on the chair. I can hold myself now. Now I can focus on the movement, the position, instead of being able to try to worry about balancing. That's not our goal right now. I'm holding myself here, keeping my legs straight, and now I can start to explore in this position. I'm keeping my leg nice and straight, quad firing, butt firing, and just stay right there and breathe into it. Three to six times, switch sides, butt tight, quad tight, and start to explore, see how far you can go down and breathe deep into your diaphragm. This one, we're gonna need a wall. You could also have a mat, a bolster, and all depend on how your back's feeling, but this is a great way to get into your hip flexors, your quads in a very non-aggressive way. This can also help with a herniated disc because if you're having a herniated disc, potentially, more likely, it's coming from tightness in the front side of your body your psoas, it's pulling on your back and it's causing some of that herniation in that disc. And so we're gonna use the wall for assistance here, but what's really nice about this floor position is very non-aggressive. You can do this in your bed, very simple to do. First thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna just test and see how we feel. Squeezing our butt changes the relationship of our hips to our quads, to our legs. By doing that, I already might feel a stretch. Maybe, maybe not. Now, if I come up onto my elbows, or if I have a bolster, I can bring this underneath, and now I can put my elbows on the bolster so it can be more comfortable, and see how I feel here. Release the glutes, see how you feel, squeeze the glutes, change that relationship, now let's see how my quads feel. And then I can slowly start working my way up to my, to my hands, even just, just by changing where my elbows are at first, See, just it changes the height of my shoulders depending on how close my elbows are to my chest or how far out they are away from my chest. Closer I get, now my chest is more up. Relax your glutes, see how you feel, squeeze your glutes, see if you feel any tightness there. If you don't, then you can start progressing. If you do, stay here and breathe and come back to this video and work on the progression. Now, we're going to get rid of the bolster because we're going to work our way up to our hands. And so if I have the strength to change the position of my hands, of my elbow, my chest to the floor, and, be in, and press up, then do that. Relax your glutes, see how you feel, kind of shift side to side. Identify some tight spots in the front side of your body. Squeeze your glutes and explore with your shoulders too. But I want to try to drive out of my shoulders. This is the last position is I'm driving out of my shoulders. I'm at the max height that I can go. I'm trying to drive my hips down to the ground. I'm not pushing my hips up. I'm trying to drive my hips down to the ground as long as it's all pain-free, comfortable range of motion. Squeeze my glutes and drive the hips into the ground. Drive my shoulders down to the ground. This is one of the positions, but this isn't the, the maximum height that you can get. I can come up even a little bit higher, right? I could even shift my body side to side and focus more on one side, and that will give you more emphasis. Main thing, squeeze the glutes, drive up, shift sides, identify those tight tender spots, stay there and breathe into it. Three to six times, remember less is more. It's about the consistency of doing something. Now, if this position is easy to do, you don't feel any pain in your back, you don't feel any pain in the front side part of your, of your thigh and in your hip flexor section, we're gonna start moving our feet up the wall and that's gonna put more of a stretch on our quads and we're gonna repeat that. Starting low, working our way up, starting low, working our way up. Every position that our feet changes on the wall. Eventually your knees will be up against the wall. You can start exploring with bringing your ankles to your butt. I'm not gonna do the full thing, but what that looks like is let's just say that my feet are off the ground about four or five inches. Same thing, I'm gonna come up, squeeze my butt, see how I feel, see how I feel, see how I feel, all the way up. 
I can bring my hands back even further and get even a higher position, squeeze my butt, shift side to side, see how I feel. If I feel good, then I'm gonna move my feet off the wall. I move them up the wall a little bit more, another four inches, doesn't have to be that big, it can be by increments of one if you want. One inch, one inch, one inch. Pull the arms back, squeeze the butt, squeeze the butt, work your way up, see how I feel. If that feels good, I come back down, and I'm just gonna go, because I feel fine, I'm gonna go all the way, I'm gonna be here, and I'm slowly gonna start coming up, squeeze my butt, and this feels like a really nice stretch Nothing too aggressive, but it actually feels okay and it feels easy. But this is an easy, nice progression that you can do that then I would progress into something a little bit more challenging that's gonna put me in a much greater angle of my hip. It's all about angles. So when you look at my body here, what's the angle, what's the relationship of my hips, my knees, and my shoulders, right? So I'm up like this, what's the relationship of my hips, sorry, my hips, my knees and my shoulders. Coming all the way back here, making sure that I'm squeezing my butt. If we don't squeeze our butt, I can put a little bit more stress and strain on that lower back. Shoulders, hips, and knees. Very important to consider when you're looking at the hip and what the overall range of motion that you have for your hip flexors, top of your quad, hip flexors, specifically the psoas for getting good range of motion about the so right and how this can help with getting into your quad, your psoas, your iliacus, all those hip flexor muscles, helping with that range of motion, getting tension off of that hip, getting tension off that lower back, and giving you the range of motion that you need in order to perform at the levels that you need to perform. And that level could be just walking daily, running, jogging, the particular sport that you're trying to play, and just improving your overall quality of life. Now, there's two peaks here, but we're not using both peaks at the same time. We're going to use one peak at a time, even if we're in a two-peak position. We're going to place these two peaks. We're going to place either peak. My belly button is right here. We're going to place either peak on, on either side of my belly button. And we're going to work up and down my abs. And I'll tell you the significance of that in a minute. All the way down to the inner part of my quads in on the outer part of those hip creases. And then we're gonna shift over and use one peak on our quad below that hip crease, above the hip crease, just inside the pelvis, and working our way all the way up just underneath the ribs and getting into the meteor part of the psoas. Now, when we're starting this, I'm gonna place, here, I'll take my, I'm gonna place two peaks right on the either side of my belly button in that line there and I'm going to breathe into the peaks. This is going to help with that mind and muscle connection getting into your diaphragm. So if you're having issues with breathing into your diaphragm, breathing deep into your diaphragm, press the peaks here and just breathe into that. You can look at some of my other videos that will just focus on just breathing. We're massaging our abs obviously in the skin above here, but we're not trying to massage our psoas. We're not trying to really massage anything too aggressively. We're just trying to breathe and just create that connection. The other thing we can do too, if we're having issues getting into our diaphragm, we can get underneath the ribs and breathe into that. I have videos on that as well. First, we're gonna focus on getting into the psoas. Start within a two peak position. You can incorporate a bolster if you need to for support. And now we're in this two peak position we're shifting our body side to side and we're focusing on one peak at a time. And we're just gonna shift and find, and this doesn't have to be painful. If it is painful, put some props onto it. You get to control the pressure, the length of time that you're in these positions, how much you're doing, it's all up to you. Now I'm shifting, I'm breathing into the peaks and then I exhale, if I want more, pressure, I can open up my elbows. If I want less pressure, I can bring up my elbows. I can add other props. I can put a towel over top of it. Either way, there's a lot of options here. Be creative, think outside the box. The goal is to be in a nice comfortable position with a little bit of discomfort at some point so we can start to break up some of those adhesions so we can get the relief that we need 
in our hips, our lower back, our knees, wherever we're feeling that discomfort. Shift my body side to side and breathe. Less is more here. Remember, it's about consistency. You could be here for a couple seconds either side, come up, move around, and you could do this 10, 20, 30, 50 times a day if you wanted to, one minute in increments. Or you could stay in a position, breathe, shift side to side, find a spot, stay into it, and then relax, breathe. The breath is really important. Listen to your body. You should never be in this position. You should never have to do that because you control the pressure. Now I'm gonna explore up a little bit higher. This, I'm focusing a little bit more on massaging into my abs. If my abs are tight, that can also affect my mobility in my hips, even into my, into my knees, because if those are tight, the range of motion that I'm getting in my spine, the range of motion that I can get bringing my shoulders back towards my knee will be affected because that front side is being so tight, and then it's causing some imbalance in my upper body towards my lower body. And there's a whole nother video on that as well. Now, I'm working my way down. I'm right on the inside. I'm right below my belly button. I started right here, right in line with my belly button. And then I went up just a little bit. So I'm right above my belly button. Now I'm working my way so my belly button's up above the, the so right. And then I'm gonna work right below this hip crease here. And I'm shifting side to side, side to side, all the way down. Because the psoas comes and in the iliacus, iliacus is right on the inside part of my pelvis connects right here and the psoas and the iliac has come down and they connect right on the inside part of my thigh. Shifting side to side and then I'm going to move down a little bit further. Same thing. Remember you're controlling the pressure. So relaxing here, shift side to side. If you feel now there's arteries, there's blood vessels, there's uh, nerves. If you feel a zing, just back off and shift it to another spot. If you feel a heartbeat, back off and shift to another spot. We don't want to aggravate anything. Breathe into it. Now I'm going down. Now I'm on the inner part of my thigh. So I'm way down here in the inner part of my thigh and massaging really my what's called your groin or your adductors. And I'm focusing on my left side. I focus on my right side. Now we're going to do one peak. We're going to still start down here and we're going to work into that inner thigh and I've turned the, the so right at a diagonal and that helps us get into that inner inner thigh in that groin spot. Shifting here so I'm moving a little bit faster but that's fine remember it's all about consistency. I could do a little bit of a massage here I don't have to stay here for a long time I can just massage into it I'm getting connection and massage is also another form of stretching it's more pinpoint stretching. When you push into that muscle, right? When you push into that muscle, that section, one we're, we're stretching the, the fascia that's around that particular part of the, of the body. Two, if the muscle's from point A to point B, and I try to stretch that, I'm gonna be stretching along this whole line in different parts and there will be tightness, right? But if I were to press into, if I were to press into the muscle, in the middle of the muscle, now it's like the muscles connected to where I pressed into and where it's inserted or where the origin's at. Really a deeper stretch. To explain that, my bicep, right, connected down here on my elbow and it's coming up here and it's connected up into my shoulder. Well, if I'm trying to stretch my bicep, I'm really stretching from the top part all the way down and then the, wherever the tightness is at, that's where the focus is. But if I were to press right here, and then now go to stretch, it's really stretching from here to here. It's not anything up here is barely getting affected. It's focusing from here down. If I move down to here, now it's focusing from here down. Vice versa, if I come back up here, now it's focusing from here down here. That allows you to start to break up those muscles and massage into those muscles. And then when you come back to the full thing, you have a nice full range. Now the next section we want to get into is our quads. We want to massage our, the top part of our quads, inner, inner quad, and even just all the way down to our knee. If this section of your body is tight, that's going to cause tension on that pelvis, which is going to cause tension on your hips and on your lower back. And this could be the culprit having either one weak quads, two tight quads, or since this is, these are tight and uh, weak, 
then it's causing your psoas to be tight and weak. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to focus on one peak or two or on its side. First one we're going to do is just one peak and we're going to start up high right below the pelvis and we're going to work our way down that quad. And the main thing with doing this massage is that we're going to press into the muscle. We got to listen to the muscle and we want to create movement. I like doing three in and outs nice and slow and then I move. If I feel like I'm pressing into or if I feel a heartbeat, then I'm going to back off because we don't want to aggravate the uh, blood vessel, the artery that's going down that leg and cause any type of numbness in our leg. And this is where the movement's very important here. And the movement can also be sliding off the, the so right or moving the heel are two different types of movements. And I'm just working my way down my quad, finding those tight, tender spots and doing three passes all the way down towards the kneecap. Now, when we start getting further down, sometimes that can, we might have to change to more of a, a two peak position because of the surface. It might be a lot easier to keep your leg on top of the sorite here than it would if the peaks were in line with the, the quad. Now, if I turn it on its side, this can actually give you a lot more space and I can rotate to the end and out and the top, nice massage on top of that quad. Remember, I'm not trying to spend a lot of time pressing into the muscles here because these are really thick muscles and I'm listening to my body, not trying to cause any type of numbness. I'm just working my way up and down my quad. This in itself is a little mini, like we've talked about, little stretch. So if I press here, this is acting like my muscles are really tight. So if I'm unable to get my heel to my butt because I'm pressing into that muscle, that's like your muscles are tight. So I'm getting a nice little stretch here, but it's from wherever I'm pressing to my knee joint. And then if I'm breathing into it and then I notice that I'm getting a little bit more into motion, a little bit more, a little bit more. Now I've created this full range of motion while it's under that compression, it's pressing in. I take that off there. Now my muscles are technically not in that tight position. So I should have a much better range of motion when I do my hip flexor training, my quad training, my lunges, range of motion, tension off my hips, tension off my back, and tension off my knees because of those types of massaging or because of that type of massage going up and down that quad. We're getting into the iliacus, which is really nice. We turn it at a diagonal. This is going to go right in the front side part of my hip. So this is my pelvis right here, and I'm going right on the inside part of that pelvis, and I turn it at a diagonal, fits nicely right on inside that pelvis, and then when I drop my other hip, it gives me a good angle, gives me a good angle for getting into that iliacus. Now I can shift my hips, I can come up on top of it, I can rotate, and this will also get into and press back into the psoas, and now all I have to do is just breathe. And also at this diagonal here, Gravity, right, is allowing my, my intestines to fall down to my left side, which then is allowing more space and more room for me to massage into the muscles that are underneath the intestines. And then now once I'm in, pressed into that iliacus and deeper into my midsection, then I can come up onto my right side, and now those intestines are out of the way, and it's all focused on the muscles and not the digestive system. It's still very important to massage into your digestive system. That's gonna help you with digestion. You're aiding your body, assisting your body in getting things moving along. We're getting into the meteor part of the psoas, which connects up here by the T12, comes all the way down, connects into the lower lumbar spine, then it starts to wrap down into our, into our knee. Now, we're going to go between the ribs and the pelvis at a more perpendicular to our body, like this, more perpendicular here, and we're going to come from the outside in, we're going to press into it, and then apply that pressure. Hold the peak here, and now I'm pressing from the side. This will help with 
pushing those intestines out of the way. We are alive. We are mostly water and we can be able to move things out of the way. Now I'm breathing, I'm not being fast. I'm not going super, I'm going slow, working my way into it. And then now I can start to apply a little bit more pressure. I can apply a lot more pressure or I can be more up on my, on my elbows with less pressure. And then I'm going to start to shift and move. And then I'm breathing. Listen to your body and breathe. I can allow myself to open up a little bit more. I can identify and find that psoas. What's important here is that we're making a connection to the muscles, to this section of our body and allowing to get in there, break up some gunk, wake up some muscles, get some things moving around a little bit more. And then that's going to allow us to then help strengthen that section of our body. Stretching, AKA massage, massage is a form of stretching. I like massage, find the positions. So the stretch positions, don't spend a crazy amount of time in that stretch position, make it more of an exercise so you can get stronger in that range of motion, combine it with the massage. So now you're getting the stretching component of it. And then you're getting that listening component, understanding not to push it too hard in the, in the massage, right? Learning not to push it too hard, not to over exaggerate things, not to be too aggressive. And then also not to be too aggressive in your workout and working on that range of motion, getting stronger in that range of motion, then it can be less potential of injury if you have more strength in the range. When you don't have strength in that range of motion, that's where you're open to more injury. You might be super flexible, but if you don't have strength in that range of motion, now you're opening yourself up to injury. You might be very unflexible and you have obviously zero strength in that range and you have zero flexibility, you're opening yourself up to a lot of potential injury. All right. So those are just some really effective ways. You obviously you want to work your left and right sometimes, and then you'll find out that one side is tighter than the other. My right side is tighter than my left side because of an injury that I had when I was younger and it's caused a lot of imbalances in my body. That's one reason why I invented the so right is because I needed it. I had hip pain, back pain, and I had knee issues, shoulder issues, imbalance issues because of that tightness on that one side of my body being consistent. The consistency is the most important. It's not about how much and how intense you can do. And that goes also for with exercise as well. Consistent, 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 measure, test, listen to your body, and you will become very efficient at what your body needs. Give that a go. Let me know in the comments, follow, subscribe, and let me know what you would like to see more of. And I will see you next time.